welcome. You are here and here is where you want to be. That's one of the main tenets behind the whole concept of how do you prevent suicide or self-sabotage or any of the other things that we've been talking about so far on the show. So this is the Suicide Prevention Show. I am Jackie Simmons, your host of the show. And we're about to deep dive into a world called how a holistic approach empowers you. And personal power is one of the tenets of preventing anything that you don't want in your life. So please help me welcome to the show our next guest, Patricia Starr. And Patricia, go ahead and unmute yourself and let's find your camera. There you go. Hey, how hello, are you? Hello. Hi, Jackie. Nice to be with you today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very, very welcome, Patricia. I am super, super excited that you are here. We are having a great time and you and I have a history. I mean, we've known each other since we were both trying to first figure out our businesses but I don't know everything about your journey. And so I so appreciate you coming in and talking about what a holistic approach is, how it can actually bring power back into people's lives. But before we go into all of that, would you take a few minutes and just tell them how you ended up in a holistic world? Because I know that's not where you started. Well, I got to say this. I remember you, Jackie in your cowboy boots, multicolored cowboy boots, and your long hair. And, the, and you were just getting involved with the elephants in the room. And I thought, wow, what a powerful, powerful thing to talk about because we all have elephants and, and oftentimes we are, can be, let's say, suffocated by our elephants in the room, right? And I love the fact that you really focused on that and that the, with the challenges that we have in our lives, and Lord knows we've all had them, what I know makes a difference is the people that we know, the people that, that we interact with, the people that can give us a perspective that will help us to see differently than th how we're looking, because we've only got one side of the box, and all the boxes have many different sides, depending, and they could be, Big sides or small <laughs> sides, depending on which box you're looking at, right? <laughs> so, it's like, how big is your elephant? You know, how big is the box that you're living your life inside? Right. Yeah. It's a really powerful question. Yeah. When and, it, and, and furthermore, I love that the taking the example of the elephant because there's the story of the eight blind men, as you know, right? And one and they all surround the elephant and one feels this part of the elephant and another feels this part and they're very the trunk is going to feel very different than the tail is going to feel very different than the leg this is going to feel very different than the ear etc cetera, etc cetera, right and, and, and that's that. why different perspectives are so freaking important so that we can get what the whole picture is and be more empowered by that so we're going to go there, like but first, <laughs> first, I wonder, for anybody who doesn't know the story of the eight blind men, while each of them was touching a different part of the elephant, they each thought that what they could feel was the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what perspective is. We have our perspective and we think that that's all there is until someone else shares their perspective. And then we start opening it back up. And don't they think that you're crazy because <laughs> your perspective doesn't me? look like their perspective? <laughs> Somebody think me crazy? Um, probably. But isn't that what's really going on right now, Jackie? You know, there's so many different perspectives of life. and it There can are a lot of perspectives of life. And this concept that you brought up about having the whole thing come together yeah. is where... I want to start with the journey because your perspective now with the holistic and just as by way of introduction, because I haven't introduced you yet. That's right. You, you are the founder of the holistic community. And this is the organization of amazing, amazing people. All right. So I'm going to let you talk about your amazing thing because I am super excited that you created this. 
talk for a minute about the amazing thing. But wait a minute, you haven't told him the story yet of how you got here. You can talk about your amazing thing after you tell about how, where this journey really started. So for me and Jackie, I'm, I'm really thrilled to be with you on with this, this show that you put on for the suicide prevention because I started way back in the days in psychotherapy. I got my PhD in psychotherapy and worked with people. And one of the things that was so clear to me very, very early on is that when that perception, like we're talking about, gets down to only one thing and there's no other choice and you feel alone, that's probably one of the most difficult things. When the truth of the matter is, there's a whole world, there's that whole elephant that we don't even see. And I saw that very, very early on. And, you know, it's funny because um, when I was in school, I had to make a choice. Was I going to choose to go down the road of working in the world of psychotherapy mm -hmm. or was I going to go out into the world and do business? And I went, you know what? I'm going to go that, that uh, second route. I'm going to go into the business world. Well, there's a lot of psychotherapy in that world as well, <laughs> as you well know, right? <laughs> so, and, and it can get as confusing and uh, as... I, 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 I'm just going to name the elephant in the room because <laughs> this, this, this is just too good. Gee, let's see. A lot of psychotherapy in business? Mm -hmm. um, let's add one little tiny element to this. Because you just weren't, you weren't in just any business. You were in the family business. So you had... Well, that was, the, that was the other element. But it didn't start out that way. But yes, that's where, that's where I started with working with my dad and, and my brother. And there was all that psychology there. <laughs> but what was interesting in my situation is that I was able to um, really, my dad and I were like Pete and repeat, you know. So if you didn't like Pete, you can go to repeat. And then, <laughs> so it was really interesting how personalities made a difference, that juggling of how you got into the market. And we expanded that business um, quite, um, after I got involved, we got very, very big. We got national and then we got international. And we had sources from all over. We pulled together, um, you know, very What powerful. kind of business was it? It was in the food brokerage business. Okay. Where we uh, contracted in food service and we actually um, helped to um, pull together very powerful contracts that would be for the whole year from a supply and um, demand standpoint. And so we pulled together programs that were not even in existence in the food business at, in that day. And that's a very heavy logistical business. There's a lot of logistics that have to be managed when you're moving. And many, many different levels. Yeah, there was, huh. there, was a, there was a shipping level, the warehousing level, the, and then there's the, there's the different games that you play at the corporate level, which everybody knows when they're in corporate America. And so I was on that wheel. Yeah, I was on that wheel in a big way. And then you add the family dynamics to it, and that gets even more interesting. And I think, you know, Jackie, and thank you for bringing that up. Um, when you're in a family business or when you're in any sort of fi family dynamics, those dynamics can be very, very close to the heart. They can be hurtful. They can be uh, alienating. And that's one of the things that um, I really got to face in my life. And it was a decision that I made where when I could see that th this happens, not just in my life, but it happened in other people's lives that I saw examples of, mm -hmm. that I got to look at that really closely. I looked at the quality of their life when they made a decision like, I'm alienated, I'm alone, I'm gonna do my thing and you know, the heck with them and the anger and the frustration and all that that kept that alienation in place. Mm. I made the decision not to do that, that that wasn't gonna be what, how I was gonna live the rest of my life. 
It sounds yeah, like there a was a big shift there. When you made that decision, because in my world, decision, the root of that is to cut away. So mm -hmm. when you made a decision, what did you end up having to cut away? I had to cut away my anger and my resentment. I had to let that go. And I had to say, okay, this happened, what's next? Got and it. It was even, got even more challenging after that, uh, Jackie, because I found out that I had breast cancer. Now- Anger has to go somewhere. It does, exactly. And, and I had enough, no, enough knowing that that was what that was. And I get to choose to let that go. But that left me alone. That left me like, you know, my family wasn't there. They had alienated me. Um, my friends that I'd been in the business, I couldn't deal with them because I was basically cut off completely. God. That was the dynamics in the, in, when I left the company. And so um, it was actually, for me, it was finding new new family, a new spiritual family that would be there to support me as I moved into new choices and new possibilities. It didn't look that way. It didn't feel that way. Um, I remember, I remember times just laying on the couch, looking up at the ceiling going, I mean, it was sort of blank. What, what is this life? That was really that was really pivotal in me. And I knew that um, having to face the cancer issue was having breast cancer. That was like a shock, but it was like, there's something here to deal with. So that's what there was for me to deal with. And I took that and I moved across the country from California to New York. And I lived in a spiritual community for five years. And I dealt with my anger. I dealt with my frustration. I dealt with feeling alienated. And I worked a new life. Wow. Okay. So, so now we're talking about a decision. Yeah. There, there are decisions that we make every day. And then there's a literally a life changing and actually possibly a life saving decision for you. Definitely a life saving. Definitely. Um, I think if I didn't make that decision, Jackie, I don't think I'd be here today. So we're going to talk about it because there are some circumstances in life that we all deal with, whether it's, you know, we have a relationship that's falling apart. We have a business that we're dealing with uh, right now in business. Every business I know is having to adapt. The idea is to adapt and thrive. And so if you, people are struggling to figure these things out. And sometimes the decision has to be to shift, you know, whether people call it pivot. But when we're talking about the kind of decision that you made, which was to walk away from all the structures that had defined your life and move into a realm that was totally, totally different. And that's sort of the shift that the world is going through right now. We've lost all of our structures. Now, we didn't get to choose it. So there's a huge power challenge here. Yours was a decision that you made. And right now, we're all in this place of this one decision of structure being taken away has been made for us. So the elephant in the room. Well, that feels very, um, very familiar then, right? Yeah, you know, for you, it's probably very familiar. Yeah. So one of the reasons I was so excited that I could interview you on the show is because I knew that you have taken this journey of all the structure falling away. And what you've learned along the way are the lessons that are going to help everyone deal with the fact that we're dealing with all the structures that we were used to falling away. Every pillar of our culture, and this is happening around the globe at the same time, which is really energetic shift, you know, the pillars are gone. The structures, the day-to-day -day routines are gone that we thought were just the way life was. Talk about an elephant wall perspective. Yeah. 
so now we know that there's this whole other way to live, but we don't have a lot of guidelines for living it. I think you touched on one that I don't know if it's on your list, uh, but I'm going to write it down just in case. So go ahead. What are the steps that someone can take to create a more whole life now that the structures are gone? Well, I think one of the one of the things that was really important for me, and I, I actually actually you triggered it. You saw, talked about shifting, but what came the word that came to me was sharing. Oh, and I was because I was like that's what I was expecting. You said shift, but I said no. The first thing to do is to share, to share with what's with with a trusted person. Um, or a trusted group of what is going on. And being open in that sharing, being that willing to, instead of hiding behind the anger and the resentment and the justification. And trust me, um, it was funny because when I first had the opportunity, shortly after this big breakup with my, my family and the business, <laughs> my reaction, I gotta say, it was so funny. My, what, don't you know what just happened to me? And not, you have no idea and I can't possibly accept your gift. No, 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 no. I was on it, right? I was like, okay, don't even talk to me because you don't understand me. So what, where did that leave me, Jackie? In where the same it? place of nothing. In the same place of nothing, of no, no thing, of a void. And it wasn't until uh, one of my friends said, what? That's the way you respond to that gift? And I just, I, she gave me a new perspective. She gave me the butt in instead of the... <laughs> what, of the what, wait, what was the gift that she was referring to? Do you remember? The gift was an opportunity for me to go to uh, work in a different place that had a lot of, a whole new, that was in New York, actually. And uh -huh. I was rejecting it. And when I actually, when she caught me and I, I went, oh, I need to really contemplate this. Mm -hmm. I saw that it was a gift and mm -hmm. I hadn't seen it as a gift. I saw it as another threat. Now understand, you know, where I was at that time, I was threatened. When you're down to that void, that no thing, it's a, it's a big threat. So if somebody comes at you with an opportunity, it looks immediately like a threat. Oh yeah. When when what it, what is it? It's an they, opportunity, but it's a threat. Yeah. And it it takes you have to stop. And yeah. somebody sharing with you, wow, that was a gift. And you didn't see it? It's like the man who got bit by a leopard and now he sees spots on everything. You know, we, we get a belief system that says the world is dangerous and all of a sudden everything looks like a threat. And that's what we're living in right now when people have made the decision that the world as it is right now is dangerous. Then, oh my God, everything that you hear on the news, everything that you see in a newspaper or on the screen looks like a threat, not because it is. Right, exactly. And you know, you just reminded me that I actually had a forewarning here with an experience right before this thing happened with my family um, that just really changed the chapter of my life. I was in uh, a foreign country with a friend who I was looking at his, his company and what he was doing and what have you. And he took me into the local market. And I was, he was a big, strong guy. I was right next to him. We were in this local market. And this eight-year-old, he looked like an eight-year-old, he may have been a 20-year-old, but he was little, came up and grabbed and ripped the necklace off of, my, off of my neck. Now, what did I see next? Nothing but fear. People were trying to help me. I could see, I could see that they were compassionate and wanting to help me, but all I could see was fear. All I could see, and I couldn't get out of there fast enough. But it's that, that's that reaction that, you, that we're talking about, is when that fear overcomes you, everything looks like that. No matter what kind of love, 
what kind of care, what kind of concern is there? It well, doesn't I, look like that. I loved your first step. The first step is when everything looks like a threat, everything sounds like a threat, everything feels threatening. Mm -hmm. Trusted community to share it in. Yes. Trusted friend, trusted group, trusted community to share that emotion in. Why? Because otherwise you might feel alone with it. And being alone with fear is not a happy place. Mm -hmm. So I love that the first step is simply trusted community. We're going we're to help and then you can figure make, this out. Then you can make a shift. And that's what, when I said, oh, this group that they, they invited me to come and work in, I can trust them. They, I know that they are above, you know, any manipulation or whatever. And so, and it's so interesting because I went to New York after I had my surgery, like within days, <laughs> like my doctor's going, why are you going across the New York? Cause I, it, I've made my decision. I'm going. And it was so interesting because inside of that experience that summer, I had more challenges than I'd even knew I was going to have. I had more of being really completely shut off by my family, having to go back for another surgery. I mean, it was, it was that, but I always had this, these people, this, that I could share with, and they always brought different options, different ways of looking at things as I was unraveling my perspective that needed to be unraveled. And it, oh, and that's really a great analogy for what's happening in the world. Our perspectives are We've been given an opportunity to unravel them. And here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing that there's a space where we could start to let things unravel. And sometimes that the opposite happens. And instead of allowing things to unravel, we try really, really, really hard to cling to yes. what's really no longer there. So the perspective of other people having a similar experience um, my daughter said it really well. We are not all in the same boat, but we're all in the same storm. And so the storm that we're talking about right now is the one of the constructs, our perspective that this is the way life is being, being dissolved around us. And yeah. now what brings us to wholeness? What brings us to wholeness? Because we thought we were whole before. Yeah. And then when the constructs went away, we realized we got some missing pieces here. So what brings us to wholeness? Community, sharing, what's next? What was next for you? Well, it's, it's willingness. It's a willingness to go on a different path, to make new decisions, to um, say, and this came, this came up for me after I was cured from uh, the cancer, um, one of my dear friends from high school offered me uh, a trip to Hawaii and um, paid you know, all expenses paid. And I was like, wow, how amazing. And as I got on the plane, I remembered a very important thing. And that is before you do anything, set your intention. And this was one of the, part of the, of the training and the sharing that had come to me in my five years where I was. And, um, and I went, oh, well, what's my intention? I don't know what my intention is. So I just closed my eyes and I asked inside, what's my intention? And what came up for me was you are to get retrained. And I went, retrained in what? And what showed up was a picture of a door and over the top of the door was massage. And I went, what? I was CEO and president of my company and you massage and the words came open this door and a thousand other doors will be open to you oh that's a beautiful line it oh was, my goodness all right yeah. so so here's the thing i here's the thing i resisted for five months <laughs> you resist something <laughs> 
<laughs> and don't we all have resistance we have to deal with it from time to time? So once I got over that, the minute that I signed up and became registered, I felt this energy come in through my, my whole being. And I felt like, wow, something new is happening here. And that's, that's an important thing. So being willing to, to start something new that you don't even know anything about. Or All right. That's amazing. Okay. So step one is sharing. Look for your trusted peeps. Look for your trusted community. And step two is be willing to allow a new direction. Be willing to open the door that shows up in front of that you. Be, for for you, it was be, a vision. Step two would be willing to hear what other people have to say. And ah. then step three would be opening to a new possibility that comes out of that after you peel away those yeah. perceptions that have not really served you. Yeah. Well, I'm going to just say that that's proven true for me as well. When I was working in sales in business and I'm a, I became a single mom at the end of the month, when I could either pay for my daycare or pay the rent and I couldn't do both. I was very fortunate in that a friend came over and suggested, you know, hey, have you thought about starting an in-home daycare, you know, a cottage industry? Well, I'd been over there. So no, I hadn't thought about that. But trust me, in that moment, I was willing for guidance because I had three kids to keep a roof over their head. The willingness sometimes comes with a lot of... Um, what is it they say? It's either the carrot or the stick. You know, it had never been my dream to own my own daycare and work at home and be with my kids full time every day. Oh, wait, you know, in that <laughs> kind of cold run. And I'm um, sure it hasn't been for most of the parents that are going through COVID, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, well, that's very true. It was a, probably a very similar experience. It yeah. wasn't my dream, yeah. but the pain of not being able to provide for my kids was enough to push me through that door. You know, to, to open, uh, and a thousand other doors have opened since then. That, that's just one place where I get it. I, it took a lot of pressure. I'm just saying, it took a lot of pressure for me to be willing to walk through that door and yeah. to shift my perspective on who I was in the world. Mm -hmm. So starting starting uh, school and I found that I loved it and it really spoke to my heart. I was really surprised and and you know I look back now and and those a lot of lot a lot of doors have been open to me. I'm so surprised that I live here in Florida when I thought I'd be back in California, and I'm really glad I'm not in California because I don't like the lockdown <laughs> as much as we have a lot less lockdown here. So that's that's a good thing. And um, I've met some incredible people and it's been very inspiring for me because because of the people that I've met here in this community, you being one of them um, and many, many others is, you know, two years ago, I started the, the holistic community and I'm very um, inspired by the people that have dedicated their lives to helping others in from all the different aspects and and I'm inspired about them collaborating and working together to make a difference for our community for our families and I'm going to name the elephant in the room because when you when you mention holistic community the perception that popped into my head when we first talked about it was well that's not for me you know I'm not a practitioner of any kind of healing art and my first thought was that that's what the holistic community was about and I'm grateful <laughs> that you were so persistent. And Jackie, you have to come. You have to meet these other people. Because it's not about what I thought it was. The holistic community really supports everyone who has a value system that says it's about being whole. It's not about everybody having the same life balance thing that I've got going on, but it's about everyone seeking their own balance 
for their business, for their family, for their, you know, whatever it is that's going on in their life to find their own balance. And so when everybody has the same perspective of wholeness and of balance <clears throat> from that basis, oh my goodness, we are diverse. I mean, we are such a diverse group of people, you know, it's, it's, whether it's the, the website guy who teaches people how to get their own websites up and going, you know, I mean, I'm over here now with the suicide prevention, the Teen Suicide Prevention Society. And it was the support of a holistic minded group, a value driven group that really held a space for me to make the shift this year to coming into, yes, this is, I'm, I'm now willing to be a mission driven mentor, to, to have it be a mission forward life. Mm -hmm. And the community makes a huge, huge difference. That is a, that's a great distinction that you made. Uh, I remember your resistance in the beginning, like, oh, that's not for me. You know, that, they don't really like even money, you know, I, oh, <laughs> and, and, and oh, yeah, yeah, I was still doing sales training and my experience of working with um, practitioners is that they get beautiful, beautiful skills and very little business training and that there's often a resistance to building a business around what they're good at. And that's what I did was help people build businesses around what they were good at. So I'm like, and that's nobody's what they gonna want me in that group. Yeah. <laughs> and they needed to have you in that group. We needed to have, like we had last night, we had an editor who talked about how to write a book and how you have to be really good with punctuation. Well, as practitioners, you may or may not think about that. Some do, some don't, but how's that gonna get their message out? Um, mm -hmm. We need, we need, um, we need CPAs, we need lawyers, we need, you know, we need community because what do we say? It takes a village. So let's create that holistic village that, that we can source and resource. And I have to say, you know, as, as we have this conversation, um, it's like for me when I, when I had my situation in California, I left, I was in a small community. And it was a diverse community from all over the world, people from all over the world, and all of them having different skills and learning to honor each and every person, where they are, what they have to offer, to find a gift, to see if that resonates with you. If it doesn't, there's somebody else. And it works together. So understanding that as a community, it's a holistic community. And it's such an interesting concept because I know, and I'm sure many, many of the people that you know, we, we live in very segmented groups. So you go to a doctor and he's a nose and throat doctor. Well, if something's going on with your gut, then go to the gut doctor, but never the twain shall meet, but they do. And so your TCM, your traditional Chinese medicine, your Ayurvedic, they look at the whole they're looking at the whole body and all of these different things as we unwind, like I unwound the various perceptions that I had of my, you know, uh, corporate world, I could get back to myself and when, that makes a difference. And, and I think you hit on something because one of the things that gets in the way of us being willing to share, being willing to hear and being willing to then move into new opportunities is what you were just talking about that that holding on and you were saying it so eloquently and the word totally left my brain that you used that i wanted to highlight so if it comes around and you remember what it is you can tell everybody <laughs> it was, it was oh, it, this idea of people in all professions, even not just traditional Chinese medicine, or tr but also traditional medicine and traditional business, the CPAs, the technology, the, you know, all of the different pieces of life that we don't necessarily think of being in a group with having one shared value. And that's what you've created. The value, be careful, and this is where I'm gonna say, hey, we want to be mindful. Is the value of the group we're hanging with, does it feel expansive or does it feel constricting? 
And I am very much aware it that by in a constricted space, it's fear driven. And so coming, just I'm inviting people to take a look at where they're spending their time in their communities. Are the community, is the community that you're spending time with, does it feel constricted or does it feel expansive? And if you're looking for a more expansive time, more expansive communities, I want to make sure I drop the link and it'll be in the notes that they can find out more about the holistic community. Just in case they're looking for something that is an expansive energy, a group of people that are looking for that. And the website is theholisticcommunity.org, O-R-G, on the end of it. So that'll be in the show notes. And that's what I wanted to remember, because it would be wrong if they didn't have a way to get more information about you, Patricia, and about the organization, and about the sense of community that is now globally focused, because... You could say a lot of things, but courtesy of COVID, we really are becoming a global village and it's happening very fast. Yeah, it is, definitely. And if you, it, a good analogy, uh, I like to use the word becoming aggregate. So instead of divisive and having little niches, you know, oh, he's not a doctor, you're not a lawyer, you're not a policeman, you know, those kinds of, you're not a preacher. Or, or the minister, it's like those, those four paradigms actually are dissolving into a community. That's where it becomes holistic. So you don't discount somebody like the bees in the beehive. They all work together. So they, they create an aggregate community that works. And I know that that's what we can create that we can create if we're open-minded, if we work together, if we honor and respect everybody for what they have to offer. We don't, my, as a, as a therapist, my gifts are my gifts. Somebody else who does the same kind of therapy has different gifts. And it's about what works and what's needed where it's needed. And that's, that's you can't find that out by yourself, can you, Jackie? You can't find that out by yourself. We all need a community. And I just want to thank you for being part of mine because the holistic approach certainly empowered me on my journey. Now, we have to come to the end. And I am so sorry, but our time is almost up. The holisticcommunity.org is where you find out more information about Patricia. The Suicide Prevention Society, the suicidepreventionshow.com is where people register if you want to share this with your friends and family so that they can come on to the show, they can listen to the amazing speakers, then please do. And for everyone who's listening, we'll put up at the end the website for going and becoming a very inspiring person. If you are not already attending as a VIP, getting all of the gifts that are a part of that, if you haven't already taken advantage of that and you'd like to, we'll put that website up and we also have a website where you can go and make a donation. And we've got a fundraiser. We always have something going on. Why? Because there's a voice in the wilderness that's getting louder and louder that says you don't have to be alone. You don't have to be alone with your thoughts. You don't have to be alone on your journey. You don't have to be alone even with your emotions. There's a safe community. There are many safe communities. This is one. And you're invited to share in all of them. So Patricia, thank you once again for being here today. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you so much, Jackie. It was really great to share. Thanks for the conversation too. I loved it.